If you're in the process of creating a sponsorship package, then you've come to the right place. My name is Chris Bayless, President and CEO of the Sponsorship Collective, and in this video, we're going to do a step by step walkthrough of exactly what you should include in your sponsorship packages. Before you dive in, though, make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon. Enjoy. Welcome to Sponsorship Packages That Work. Learn exactly what sponsors want to see. So we're going to talk about sponsorship packages. Uh, again, this is me, uh, Chris Bayless, President and CEO of the Sponsorship Collective, uh, self-proclaimed self uh, sponsorship geek. And uh, uh, basically, uh, you know, I run the Sponsorship Collective. We're a consulting firm whose main focus actually is on sponsorship valuations, building strategy, and uh, and helping clients ultimately secure more sponsorship dollars. And we take on clients in Canada and the US, uh, but our education uh, products, I suppose, uh, are actually uh, consumed or used by people from all over Canada, United States, Europe, Australia, New Zealand. So, uh, so what I bring to you today and in this session really is a result of that experience, and uh, and I offer it to you as as something that's worked well for me and that uh, that I hope will work well for you. So, uh, this is what we're going to do today. We're actually going to walk through the sponsorship deck structure, and we're going to use I'm going to use that as a way of, of educating and sharing with you best practices, kind of section by section. And then I'm going to show you a sponsorship deck that I had designed um, uh, using like one of the one of those online designers for a couple hundred bucks, you know, for the for the price of a a survey tool and a couple hundred dollars in design, I was able to in an afternoon create a sponsorship deck using these principles for very little money uh, that will serve the exact purpose of the sponsorship package, which is to get people to agree to meet with you, not to make the sale. So, but you already know that, um, from, from the earlier session today. So anyway, this is what we're going to talk about today. Okay. So let's talk about the sponsorship deck, the most misunderstood, and I would argue poorly used tool in sponsorship. Uh, you can do sponsorship without a sponsorship deck. But a sponsorship deck alone is not enough to do sponsorship. So uh, I think that we obsess over sponsorship decks. We think it's the most essential thing um, uh, to sell sponsorship. It is not. Uh, so there, it can certainly serve some valuable purposes, but uh, uh, but I, I, I honestly, I think it's overstated how important the sponsorship deck is. So uh, so keep in mind that uh, sort of backdrop as we go, that framework as we go. So what is the purpose of the sponsorship package? To make the sale? To get people to uh, cut out one of those little, little like fill in, fill in this box if you want this sponsorship and send us a check uh, at the bottom? Is, no, it's not to do that at all. The real purpose of the sponsorship package is to outline your audience, define the opportunity, drive your prospects to you so that you can sell them live in person or on the phone and uh, it can be used to outline discussions that you've had with prospects uh, using the results of the discovery questions in other words the sponsorship package itself um, is a tool to get prospects to talk to you the real sales tool is not to actually make the sale so that might be shocking to many of you um, some of you may be thinking yeah you know that I get it, but wouldn't it be great if the sponsorship package could make the sale anyway? You know, this this guy doesn't really know what he's talking about. Believe me when I tell you, if the sponsorship package makes the sale, you're undervalued and you've left money on the table. And that's that. So it does not make the sale. It does not include a grid like gold, silver, bronze, or any other name. It does not include a cutout uh, to be included with payment right? Fill this out, check a box, send back a check. It does not try to guess at what your sponsors want. The sponsorship package should include an about us section, uh, audience data, lots of audience data. It should describe some of the opportunities that you offer. I'm going to show you, you're going to see exactly what I recommend. 
It includes the ask, it's not what you think, uh, and it includes a strong and well-written call to action. So let's start with the About Us page. What should you include in the About Us section of a sponsorship pitch deck? Well, um, uh, if you are a charity, you probably have your mission, vision, history, biography of uh, the CEO or a board member, uh, pictures and pictures and pictures of the people you're going to help and a bunch of stuff about how many people or kids or animals or whatever you've accomplished. Um, that is a phenomenon specific to the charitable sector that simply doesn't exist anywhere else. Everywhere else talks about on the About Us page, a really short introduction to who, who we are, uh, and then it goes into audience data. So the About Us page is really meant to be a very, very simple introduction. Short is good, very short is better. Um, biographies, mission, vision, cause, no. That, don't I don't include any of that stuff other than maybe uh, a, like a sentence or two about what my organization is. Um, sponsors aren't sponsoring your organization. They're not contributing to your mission. They're not helping the Montreal Canadiens win more hockey games um, or the Oakland A's win more baseball games. They're interested in connecting with your audience. So if your sponsorship pitch deck is focused on anything other than audience, you are focusing on the wrong things. So I say no more than one page or one paragraph. You see that uh, the, the deck that, uh, the template and the deck that I'll be sending you will actually be in PowerPoint, that I prefer PowerPoint um, uh, versus a, like a, like a designed brochure, but, uh, but I'll, I'll leave it to you to decide. Uh, but my preference is most definitely PowerPoint. So a uh, paragraph or less in a nice big font. That's it. So we've moved on from the About Us page. Uh, this is the name of our organization. This is a sentence or two about who we are. Now check out our audience. Uh, check out the event or the opportunity and check out the, the audience that is involved in this. So I know that uh, the About Us section often acts as a stand-in for lack of audience data, right? We'll put six, seven, eight pages all about who we are and wow them with the strength of our brand. Uh, as a cover for the fact that we don't actually know who our audience is aside from families or everyone or, or whatever. Uh, so we're actually going to flip that on its head completely. Audience data is without question the key to high value sponsorship. So uh, again, while this is not designed entirely for charities, it's important uh, in particular for charities to know that your cause is irrelevant in sponsorship. I know that you don't want to hear this and that it comes as a surprise because when you're doing any other type of fundraising, your cause is highly relevant. So just to clarify, your cause is relevant to your audience. Your audience is relevant to your sponsor. Do not focus on your mission and vision uh, uh, to sell a sponsor. Focus instead on your audience and what you know about them and why your, why your cause matters to that audience. Cause is important to your audience, audience important to your prospect. You use your cause to attract and define your audience. You use your audience to define and attract a prospect. Now, this is true if you're a sport team, a municipality, a hospital, university, college, it makes no difference. You use your opportunity to bring in an audience, right? a music festival. Your audience cares about the thing they paid to see or engage with. They, they don't care about your mission as the event organizer and neither does your sponsor. So you use the, the, the thing that you're offering to attract your audience, then you get to know and define that audience and then offer ways to engage with that audience up to your sponsor known as activations. And we have a whole section on a whole workshop, I should say, just on activations. So uh, we're gonna go deep into that concept. Sponsorship, by way of reminder, is always this, right? Your property brings in an audience, audience brings in a prospect, Never this. Property does not bring in a sponsor. Sponsorship is about marketing and sales. Marketing and sales requires an action or a goal, right? I.e. someone to make a purchase or someone to walk away with a particular belief or knowledge of a product with an intent to purchase in the future. An action or goal requires a particular individual or group of people, right? You need someone to take the action. They, a verb cannot exist in the absence of somebody taking that action. Your opportunity needs to be about the audience that you can help take a 
particular action. Because audience data is a complex topic, uh, we've got an entire session dedicated just to that. So hang on for that and we're gonna go in deep. Uh, stay tuned for more of this in the audience data workshop. So just a reminder, you might hear long pauses or mutes. That is me taking a loud sip of my coffee and sparing you from the from the noises. I have a pretty good mic, which means it picks up um, uh, what I'm told is an incredibly annoying characteristic of mine and that I drink coffee loudly. That's what 14 years of marriage will get you, a list of all the things you do that annoy other people. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, so now we're gonna describe the opportunity, right? That's what you're going to do in your sponsorship package otherwise known as activation time. So we're not gonna talk super deep about activations now because we're gonna go in pretty deep in the next section. Uh, but this is the, this is typically what people do, uh, what people offer as the gold, silver, bronze approach, right? So what do you put in your list of opportunities? Is it a menu of all the things you have to offer so that a sponsor can go through and pick the things they would like to purchase? Is it a gold, silver, bronze? Does it contain prices? What do you put in your list of opportunities? Well, here's what I recommend. No grids, no list or menu of assets, no pricing. The fact that you can put someone's logo on a sign, you don't need to put that in your sponsorship package. If you're offering them the opportunity to raise awareness among their target audience, a logo on a sign may or may not even accomplish that. You need to understand what your sponsor wants to do in order to know whether or not they want a logo on a sign, right? You're gonna offer everyone free tickets, it's not relevant unless your sponsor wants those things. Every sponsor knows that if they want to have free tickets or logo placement or e-blast, that it's on offer. Putting reams and reams and reams of gold sponsors get six of these and eight of those and 14 of those and silver gets only four, it gets half as many. It's not relevant to your sponsors and it's getting your sponsorship packages thrown in the garbage. Instead, focus on some of the activation ideas that you have to add value to your audience, right? Your sponsor's target customer. Share case studies about how you've uh, delivered on really cool sponsorship opportunities. Talk about the outcomes that you can offer sponsors. Can you help them with brand awareness? Can you help them with product placement? Rather than saying, we're going to let you give out 500 samples for $3.42, those things are not this is not the time for that. Once you've delivered a sponsorship package uh, about your audience and you've established with your sponsor that they're highly interested in that audience, then you move to the discovery questions to find out whether or not, um, figure out what it is your sponsor wants. And then from there, you can build out a custom offering using the valuation and, and all the things we're gonna talk about today. So, the, so what I actually see most often is like five to six pages all about us uh, maybe a passing in passing uh, we have families who come to our event here's a picture of them and then pages and pages of here's how you can give us your money uh, this is the exact opposite of what we should be doing very short very very short uh, about us very very short about the types of opportunities very heavy on the audience data to prove that you can deliver and then have a conversation with your prospects with with your sponsors Here's the problem with the gold, silver, bronze approach of the listing everything, right? It is the spaghetti method. It's based on the false belief that every sponsor wants a little bit of everything, right? That if you throw everything at the wall, something will stick. In other words, you show your sponsors every single thing they can have, they're going to read through the whole thing and decide based on that, which things they'd like to purchase. It does not work that way. You do not want to get into the incorrect thinking that that every sponsor wants a little bit of employee engagement, a little bit of branding, a little bit of product placement, a little bit of whatever it is. Actually, sponsors know exactly what they want in order to drive sales. Uh, based on the inefficient approach of throwing everything at the wall, you do not want it. More is not better. Better is better. Within the package, a simple bulleted list of the ways you can work with sponsors is enough. But once you meet with a sponsor, then you can go deep into activation ideas, what they truly want. And as you start to get to know what your sponsors want, the, the, the magic happens and things become worth a lot more, right? If, if you're making them buy something off the shelf, you just can't price it very high. Okay, the ask. 
It's not what you think. Most people on their, actually, I don't want you to read ahead. Most people in their sponsorship pitch decks, uh, they, they've listed all of the opportunities. And then at the bottom, there's this thing for you to cut out and send back, um, uh, you know, with a check or go online and, or provide your credit card information and, and you will be the proud owner of a silver sponsorship level. That is definitely not the approach that we recommend and that, that, that I recommend. And it definitely does not work if you're looking at any major sponsorship. And, uh, and the truth is you don't define what major sponsorship is. Your sponsor does. Just because it's only $5,000, if that's small to you, that may not be small to your sponsor. And so they may demand or, uh, or, or just not be interested in sponsoring unless they have a tailored approach. So the ask is done in person, not in a package. You can capture the ask in your sponsorship deck after you've made it, right? So in other words, you've had a conversation with your sponsor. They've told you what they're interested in. They've, you've agreed on an amount. Then you update the sponsorship package to outline exactly what they agreed to, right? Or you can create a sponsorship agreement instead. Uh, so your initial sponsorship package is really to set up the meeting not prices. Always custom, never based on predetermined levels. And it, but it requires you to know your value, right? You have to use, uh, you have to do evaluation. Obviously we have all kinds of templates and, and for everyone who's here for the, for the day, you're going to get the valuation calculators and we're going to teach you how to use it. Uh, but the idea is that you must do evaluation, uh, so that when you start to negotiate with your sponsors, uh, you'll know exactly how much to charge them and how to justify it. Uh, and also, I'll just flag now that uh, we're starting to see a, a significant influx of clients who are being sent to us by sponsors, brands who are requiring sponsorship seekers to get a third-party valuation before they'll move forward. So brands aren't doing the valuations. They're saying they're putting the onus back on you, the sponsorship seeker, to go and prove by way of a third-party valuation that that your value is true. Uh, and so, uh, and just as a, a subjective observation, virtually everyone we work with undervalues themselves, right? You're asking for too little, far too little. So the ask within the sponsorship deck is actually not an ask at all. Uh, the ask is done in person. You can add an ask to the sponsorship package after you've gained agreement in person or over the phone if, um, if in person isn't possible or if phone is preferred by your sponsor. So once you've done a, uh, a, a sponsorship package, what do you put in your call to action section, right? The call to action is the thing you use to get your sponsor to agree to do something. Now, if we've established that the thing you want your sponsor to do is to agree to a meeting, then your call to action really needs to be focused on that. Uh, the, what is the saying? The fox that cat, uh, chases two birds catches none. You don't want to say, um, give us a call, let's have a meeting. Or if you already know what you want, just fill this out and send us your money. You are not trying to drive anybody at all to giving you money as a result of your sponsorship package. You are looking for a meeting with your sponsors, with your prospects. I cannot stress that enough. So what do you put in your call to action page? I can tell you I've seen some horrifying things uh, at the end of a sponsorship pitch deck or a sponsorship package. Uh, we're going to keep it really simple here today. Short and sweet, right? Short is good. Very short is very good. Everything we do is custom. Tell us more about your sales and marketing goals. And we, we want to make it happen. That's it, right? Everything we do is custom. Let's connect and talk more about your goals. One contact person, just one, one email address and one direct phone line. And the phone line that you give them, you're going to, is the one that you can answer. That might be your cell phone, it might be your office line, but when your phone rings, you must answer it, right? Do not put your phone number on a sponsorship pitch deck and have it go to voicemail um, nine times out of 10, right? When someone picks up the phone and calls because they're interested in learning more, you wanna have an instant and immediate uh, conversation. Why? Well, if you're hard to get a hold of during the sales phase, imagine what 
what you'll be like once you've already captured the money. That's what the sponsor thinks, right? The hungriest part of sponsorship is when you want the sale and you're, you can't answer the phone or, or, um, or, or be available. So one contact person by name, uh, you can, you can keep the, uh, the job title, um, if, if you want, unless it's something like director of making companies give us money, right? Or if you're the, if you're in, in fundraising director of corporate philanthropy, I wouldn't actually keep my job title on the sponsorship pitch deck. If that were my title, uh, you, you don't want to, nobody wants to be sold to. So if your job title is something like corporate partnerships or I don't know, uh, sponsorship and activation, keep your job title. But uh, on on the on the package, but if it's corporate giving, corporate philanthropy, uh, director of sales, uh, I would avoid it. So one contact name, your direct email, and a direct phone number. No info at, no sponsorship at, but Chris at sponsorshipcollective.com. The goal is to get your prospect on the phone or to agree to a meeting. Right, that's what you are looking for. So uh, let's look at a sample. Uh, this comes right out of uh, the audience data that we collect on a regular basis uh, on behalf of our clients. This is, um, uh, and then this is something that I, I went through like 99 designs. Um, I think it was like 350 bucks and I had 10 different designs to choose from. So the process of creating and designing a sponsorship pitch deck is it by no means an expensive process. It doesn't have to be complex. And again, you're not trying to convince, it's not a sales, uh, it's a sales tool, but the outcome that you're trying to produce is a conversation with a prospect. It is not you trying to uh, tell them everything they need to know to make a purchasing decision on the spot. Um, uh, that's what everyone else is doing. And uh, everyone else is struggling, right? You you don't want to be like everyone else. You want to be different and unique, and and you want to stand out from the crowd. So, very simple uh, uh, PowerPoint pitch deck that I had put together by, um, like I said, a handful of designers who had zero experience in the sponsorship space. Um, so yeah, check out Ninety Nine Designs, and uh, it, super easy to use. So here it is, um, the nonprofit charity. I, I'm just gonna use a charity run uh, because uh, like 60% of the people uh, who register for today are, are in the charitable sector. So I'm gonna show you, um, I, I'm just gonna use a charitable example. If you are in anything other than a charity, uh, it, it's exactly the same process. You're, you'll just be the Montreal Canadians instead of the nonprofit charity. So that's your name, that's your logo. Connect with your target market in a way that speaks directly to them and their interests. That's your promise, right? Uh, we're the nonprofit charity, not helping kids do X, Y, Z, not, um, you know, the sponsorship collective's mission to, to bring best practice sponsorship to the market. No, I want to help you, the brand, connect to your target market in a way that speaks directly to them and their interests. It's not just boring old advertising or logo placement. It's connecting you to your target market. So you're going to get, I mean, you could use this exact design if you'd like um, and just change the change the wording, or you're also going to get the template with no design and then submit it to your designer or 99designs and have them create something based on your own branding. Uh, but I want to show you what it looks like in action. Okay, about us. Here's the paragraph or two. Nonprofit charity was launched in 1997 in order to help people. We continue to help people through programming that matters in ways that matter and in ways that our donors care about. Simply put, our mission is to create a world where everybody is happy. There's my little, um, my little icons for everyone and happy. That's it, right? We're a charity, we've been around, we help people. Now let's talk about what really matters. So we have an event, the big run for charity. The Big Run for Charity is the signature fundraising event for the nonprofit charity. Every year, over 10,000 people run five kilometers, three miles in support of the mission. That's it, right? Just a very simple couple of sentences to say, we have an event, the people who come care about our charity. Here's what the event looks like. 10,000 people, one day event, five kilometers of running, 15 stations along the route, giving out product and samples. Uh, I don't encourage you to have 15 stations along a 5K route, but this isn't a real run. Um, 10,000 runners, 500 volunteers. So 
I'm lucky if I even see this much audience data in the average sponsorship pitch deck. This would actually be considered a lot by market standards, but not anywhere near what sponsors need. So let's go deeper. About our audience, starting on the left, uh, and then we're gonna go clockwise. 27% are 55 and older, 32% are aged 29 to 35, 76% have two or more children living at home, 21% bank with Royal Bank, 19% with TD, 17% with CIBC, 21% drive Toyota, Ford, Honda, Chevy. 32% use Rogers, 23% AT&T, 21% TELUS. About a quarter make over 150K a year. 48% have participated in this event uh, in, the, in the past three years, right? So they're repeat participants. 63% are female. So this would be considered a, a, an extreme amount of audience data compared to what I see in the marketplace. Most people don't have anywhere near this level of data but we're not done yet. In the next 18 months, 26% of our audience plan a major home renovation. 18% plan to travel within the US. 65% plan to change their health insurance plans. 33% plan to buy their first home. 79% are going to switch cell phone providers. 62% uh, are gonna go back to university. It's a pretty bizarre uh, <laughs> collection of people who are going to have a major home renovation, travel, um, and, and go back to school, but whatever. 63% will rent a car, 33% will go to Europe, 82% plan to take some kind of vacation, 22% will apply for a new credit card. Now we're talking, right? Now we can actually paint a picture, right? 10,000 people are gonna show up at our event, of which this is who they are. This is who they currently bank with. These are the current brands that they wanna be in, that they're involved with. Here are the things that they, actions they plan to take in the next 18 months. But we're not done yet. Our audience is responsive. The open rate on emails sent to our database is typically 34% with a click-through rate of 15%. When asked if our attendees would change a purchase based on sponsorship of this event, 87% of them said they would. Therefore, not only does our audience wanna hear from us, but they want to know who we're working with, companies just like yours. What good is all of this data if no one cares? So you have to be able to prove in some way that your audience will actually change a purchase based on sponsorship, that you can affect buying behavior, that you can affect, that you can actually increase that awareness, right? And so if your open rate is very, very low or non-existent, it doesn't matter how big your database is. And if you don't know what your open rate is, why would a sponsor want to work with you when they can just do straight up digital marketing and buy email lists? They don't need you. But we're not done yet. We have a strong digital presence and an engaged audience. 50,000 web visits every month, 12,000 Twitter followers, 21,000 Facebook likes, 30,000 email addresses in our database, 8,000 Instagram followers. Now these are all vanity metrics, but because you've proven on the previous slides that you've got good data about who's coming to your event, these vanity metrics, which don't really say anything about the types and quality of followers, uh, it, it, it's, not so, it's not as much of a faux pas. So often what I'll just see is we have 10,000 people coming, 50,000 followers on social media, um, gold, silver, bronze, cut this out and give us your money. Uh, and we're gonna help lots of people. So then you can make the claim here at the bottom, we have all kinds of interesting data on our social media following and our digital presence. Tell us what you're looking for and we can and we can put something together, right? The social media data is really easy to get um, uh, and free to get, it's, it's, uh, it's available. Uh, and if you're not sure how to get it, then, uh, then then I'll honestly just do a Google search on, on how to find out about your Twitter followers and your, your Facebook, uh, how to harvest data from Google Analytics. Like super, super easy, tons of YouTube videos about it. Um, uh, so you've got all this really interesting uh, uh, qualitative data about your audience. You've got this really interesting quantitative data and you're telling your, your prospect, let's talk about what it is you're after because I think I know I can put together a better report or telling about who's in my database. If you want to get really, um, if you really want to geek out on this, and uh, and I certainly recommend you do, go into who actually share that data about your social media followers on the next slide. 
we're not done yet. Let's talk about our media partnerships. We have a media we have media partnerships with XYZ Print, 123 FM Radio, and an exclusive broadcast agreement with Channel 71 on the day of the event. Last year, we also saw the following organic media, right? Talk about your previous year's media reach so that you uh, you can look back to predict future exposure, right? Media one, media two, media three. Here's some cutouts examples. Because of this, we had a combined national media presence of over 5 million views during the two months leading up to the event. So by extension, this the audience of these media outlets becomes your audience. So it's not just straight up, we've got lots of eyeballs, you should be involved. You're actually talking about uh, some really in-depth, interesting stuff about your audience. Now you're probably thinking right now, I don't know any of this stuff, how do I get it? Great, uh, show up at the uh, audience data workshop and I'm, I'm gonna show you how to get it. Everything we do is custom. We don't use stock packages because we know they don't work. We wanna create something just for you, designed to help you achieve your goals. Some of the ways that we can work together include naming opportunities, on-site activations, brand recognition, VIP opportunities, employee engagement, advertising and media presence, sampling and product placement, experiential marketing. In other words, we wanna hear about your goals and then build something just for you and your budget. So uh, I didn't include it in this one, but after this is a good place to, to talk about some of those sample activation opportunities, some of the cool things that you've done, maybe some pictures of your event where sponsors are engaging and, um, and working uh, and, and showing off their their uh, what what they're doing, their products, etc. So I didn't do it for this one, but but uh, this is where you would add some of those examples. Call to action. Let's connect. We're excited to hear about your goals and how we can help you achieve them. Get in touch and let's talk about ways we can work together. Chris Bayless, head of corporate partnerships. Chris at sponsorshipcollective.com, and that is not my real phone number, obviously. So that's a really uh, simple, quick, easy way to show off your audience data. Um, this pitch deck is something, uh, exactly this pitch deck, actually, well, uh, exactly this structure is what I've used for literally for millions of dollars in sponsorship. It's so much better than a, here's two pages about us, a gold, silver, bronze um, grid, and a give us your money at the following email address. So much better than that approach. Uh, I would encourage you to start to collect, maybe you don't have them yet, but start to collect examples of uh, sc like screenshots of social media, uh, examples of uh, cool activations or product giveaways or, or things that you're working on with your sponsors. Not sure what an activation is? Well, no problem. We're going to go pretty deep into that in, uh, in another session. So you'll, you'll know exactly what uh, sponsors are looking for by way of cool activations. So that's it. You know, if we go back to the beginning, we just do a quick run through title page about us. Very simple. We're right into the event and who's coming. Then we're going deeper into our audience, then deeper into our audience, then deeper into our audience. Then we're talking about our social and digital presence. Then we're talking about our media partnerships. If, if this thing was, let's go back and count. It is, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's 10 pages of which seven are about audience data. 70% of this pitch deck is about audience data in a very simple 10 page pitch deck. If you were delivering this in person and walking through, walking someone through your pitch, then I would actually, instead of the let's connect, uh, I would share some examples and then put some of those discovery questions in, in the package and sit down and ask your prospect to talk to you about the ways that they like to engage in sponsorship.